For our next selection, let us notice page 396 in our regular songbooks, page 396. No, not one. No, not one. All that have it? Let us see. There's not a friend like the lowly desire. No, not one. No, not one. None else could hear all I saw. our markers at page 904 for the Savior's invitation, page 904 for the Savior's invitation. For our next selection, we are going to sing page 608, 608. Amen. He gave me a song. You guys want to stand while we uh, sing this lesson? You want to stand? He gave me a song. <clears throat> all of heaven? Let us sing. He took my burdens all away up to a brighter day. He gave me a song. A 
church say amen. amen. Let all church say amen again. I would like to have Brother Tony hit us with another chorus of either that one or Remember Me or wherever you want to go, brother. Uh, but I just wanted to come up real quick and make a quick announcement. Uh, before uh, going over to Sister Paula's house, we wanted to confirm if it was okay to go and visit her. And we found out that they have increased her medication. Uh, she is not feeling well today. So we are going to postpone the visiting of our beloved sister. Uh, for those that do know, our sister is on hospice, and we want to continue to pray for her as she goes through these difficult times. I have been speaking with her regularly, as some of the other people here have been speaking with her, and we planned on going over there to give her communion and sing songs and try to encourage her, uh, but her health will not allow that for today. So if you don't mind, uh, before Brother Tony gives us one verse of a song, let's stop and go to the Lord in prayer right now for our sister. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Father, for all that you have done and all you continue to do, Father. We're so appreciative, Father, of you sending your son and what he did for us on the cross, Father. Even if we are living our lives, Father, that are, you know, we may not be perfect, we may not be doing all the things that we should be doing, Father. We still might have some skeletons in our closet. We're still trying to work out our soul salvation, Father. But that's not to say that we're not appreciative of your grace. It's not to say that we're not appreciative of your mercy. That is not to say that we're not appreciative of your uh, long uh, suffering for us, Father. We just ask, Father, that you continue to lift us up in spirit 
so that we may improve, so that we may learn what it means to walk the way you would have us to walk. But on this morning, Father, we come, Father, just to pray for our beloved sister Paula. We know, Father, that the doctors have basically said that there's nothing else that they can do. And so they have sent our beloved sister home, Father, and she is right now dealing with things that none of us have to deal with. And whether it's mental, whether it's physical, just the state of her mind, how she is living, and just the pain and suffering that she is going through right now, Father. Father, we had every intention to go in and visiting our beloved sister to encourage her, to cheer her up. But we understand, Father, that uh, it's not possible for us to do that today. So, Father, we would just like to send our collective prayers and our voices up to heaven, Father, so that you may touch her body so that she feels better. You may touch her mind so it is at ease. You may touch her spirit so she can have some comfortable rest and sleep on this afternoon, Father. Father, our prayer is for our beloved sister on behalf of our beloved sister. We miss her so much. We love her so much, Father. We know that there are certain things we can't explain. But, Father, we want to slow down for a minute and take a moment, number one, to appreciate everything that you have done for us. The fact that we were able to get up out of our beds and come here to sing praises and to worship you. But at the same time, Father, we will never, ever forget those that want to be here but are not able to be here, Father. So we send this prayer to our beloved sister and all others, Father, that may be struggling with illnesses and pain and just different things going on in their lives, Father. We love them all. And we pray for them, Father. And we say this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us know page 351. 351. He bore it all. We'll sing the first verse only of He bore it all. 351. All of heaven. Let us sing. My precious Savior, suffer pain and agony. He bore it all. That I might live. He broke the bonds of sin and set the captive free. He bore it all. all that I might in his presence let He bore it all. That I might see his shining face. He bore it with him I live, I stood condemned to die, but Jesus took my place. He bore it all, that I might He bore it Jesus bore it all, I see his shiny face. He bore it all. That I might live, I still come dim to die. He freely took my place, he bore it all. That I, I might live. Oh, yeah, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Thank God for Jesus that he bore it all in his flesh on the cross for you and I, that we might live and have eternal life. What a blessing we have this morning in Christ Jesus. Your presence here is indicative of the fact that you're concerned about your soul salvation. And we're so thankful that you have come our way. To our visitors and guests, you are our honored guests. And to those that are watching live on live stream, we want to welcome you to the East Palomar Street Church of Christ. I want to thank Brother William for another privilege to stand this morning in the gateway of the council. Uh, continue to pray for him. Uh, He's been putting in some hours at work, and I, I know what you're going through, Brother Williams, and I'm just thankful that you can put your trust uh, in me to come and speak for you the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. Continue to pray for him and his wife. And church, let's continue to pray for one another because we are we're, we're, we're the family of God. And the family of God ought to pray together. By, but somebody said the family that pray together stays together. Amen. Am I right about it? So continue to pray. And don't grow weary in well-doing. Uh, God not like man to forget your work of faith 
and labor of love in the vineyard of the Lord. And so we don't want to be too long this morning. Uh, uh, I have a lesson here called excessive celebration. Oh, I, I'm good, brother. Uh, 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 we ought to be celebrating. Yes. Uh, and it be, ought to be excessive. You know, it should be overboard. You know what I mean? Because of what the Lord has done for us. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. I want to thank Brother Tony and the church uh, and the way in which you blended your voices together. Uh, I always enjoy his singing. He always has some fresh new songs for me to learn. And so uh, I pray that you have come here this morning to learn more about God's will and God's way and to learn that we have to have excessive celebration when we come to serving the Lord. Uh, we shouldn't be uh, nothing too hard for us to do. Uh, uh, shouldn't be nothing too hard for us to do. You know, uh, today is the first day of the NFL, Brother Whitley. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to be watching. But, you know, uh, they, have, they have all kind of penalties for offsides and uh, pass interference and, and all this other stuff. But then uh, they have one a uh, penalty called excessive celebration after somebody make a touchdown. Uh, you remember Deion Sanders and Icky Wood and Billy White Shoe Johnson. They always celebrate after they made a touchdown. You know what I mean? And so we ought to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Am I right about it? Because he did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And our celebration ought to be excessive, extravagant, because God was extravagant towards us and sending his son to die on Calvary's cross for us. Am I right about it? He sent the very best of heaven to give his life for you and I. It wasn't that he messed up, it's that we were all messed up. Am I right about it? And so he did something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. We were wallowing in the cesspool of sin. But God looked down on men through his grace, sent his son to die in our place. And so let's read this text, and we're going to see if we can make some application for us today. Uh, I'm reading from the NIV, and you have up there King James Version. So it's, it's still the same. It's still the Bible, okay? Just a different translation. It says six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, uh, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Mary served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a, a, a pint of nard, an expensive perfume and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was full with the fragrance of the perfume. Oh, I wish this house were full of the Spirit of God. Am I right about it? When we come together, the Spirit of God dwells among us here. But one of the disciples, Judas, Judas Iscariot, who was later to portray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth about a year wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as the keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to whatever was put in it. <laughs> That's a bad dude. Am I right about it? <coughs> uh, he did not say this because, uh, oh, I'm, 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 verse 7. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she to save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Excessive celebration. I just want to 
Uh, before I do go into the lesson, thank my wife for being with me this morning. Uh, she's always by my side and my greatest cheerleader and uh, my greatest critic. You see what I mean? But, but it's, it's good. It's good because, you know, if, if somebody don't tell you the truth about yourself, you never learn. You never grow. And so, uh, uh, so uh, I want to thank her for always supporting me. And so as we go into this text, we see that uh, they were gathered together to celebrate the Passover. Uh, the Hebrews celebrate the Passover because it was uh, something that was done when they were in Egyptian bondage. God told Moses to have the children of Israel put the door on the lintel and over the doorpost. Uh, after he done sent nine plagues, this was the tenth plague that he sent for the children of, against the nation of Egypt. And the tenth plague was the death angel. And God said, put this blood over the doorpost and on over the door, and I'm going to send the death angel. And when the death, and whoever don't have the blood over their house, I'm going to stop at that house. But whoever don't, whoever have the blood over the doorpost, like I said, I'm going to pass over that house. Well, well, this morning you need the blood of Jesus. Am I right about it? Because stuff that stopped at other people's houses, huh? Uh, 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 I just dropped my train of thought. Uh, stuff that stopped at other people's houses, condemnation, uh, separation from God, uh, uh, sin and degradation will pass over your house when it's covered by the blood. And so you need to be in Christ this morning. You need to be in the blood of Jesus so that when the death angel comes, it's coming. It will pass over your house and it won't tear up your house. And so here uh, they come to celebrate the Passover. But Mary, they came to celebrate a holy day. But Mary came to celebrate the Holy One. You see what I'm saying? She came to celebrate the whole day. They, they, they caught up on this uh, holiday that they call a holy day. But Mary came to celebrate the Holy One. Why did you come this morning? Did you, did you come to this because it's Sunday? Or did you come to celebrate the Holy One? Did you come to celebrate the Holy One? We come to celebrate the Holy One. And as... As she began to uh, 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 pick open this box, this ointment on Jesus, uh, the people in the house got upset. Judas said, why wouldn't this sold and given to the poor? In other words, the spiritual referees, <coughs> excuse me, the spiritual referees, Began to begin to blow whistles and, and throw flags. Beep, beep, beep. A penalty. You see what I'm saying? Why are you wasting this expensive ointment on Jesus? Huh? They're throwing flags. You see, I can see uh, the people outside the house getting upset. You see what I'm saying? See, uh, the people outside the house get, have the right to get upset because they don't know nothing about Jesus. But it was those that were most closest to him, his disciples, Judas and Peter and them. They started throwing flags up in the air. Beep, beep, penalty. Why? Well, how come you didn't sell this stuff? It's not the people on the outside that have a problem with celebrating Jesus. It seems like it's the people in the house that have the problem with being people celebrating Jesus. I got a problem with you because you clap too loud. Got a problem with you because you sing too loud. Got a problem with you because you won't sit still. But you, you can't regulate my spirit. You see what I'm saying? I get excited when I come in the house of the Lord. 
And, 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 and just because you don't get excited, don't get mad at me and start throwing flags and things. Want to regulate me? The spirit that I have, you didn't give it to me. The spirit I got came from God above. So I pray that when you come to the house of the Lord, that you will have some extravagant praise for him. Like he didn't do nothing for you? Huh? Well, well Proverbs, Psalms uh, 68 and 19 said, Blessed be the Lord uh, who daily loads us with benefits. Yeah. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on, his, on your way? Am I right about it? What benefits? Well, he woke me up. Uh, my children are all at home. Uh, uh, and I, I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus because I went to bed with my mind stayed on Jesus. I went to bed and woke up wanting to celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Not just to come to the house of the Lord. But to celebrate Jesus and to be with my brothers and my sisters. You see what I'm saying? Or do you just, if you just get in your mind, what well, is just Sunday, we just going to make it a routine. And, and, and once it becomes a routine, it becomes a rut. You see what I'm saying? I know some congregations just go through the motions. Am I right about it? Or we, or we just fly five steps of worship? No, there's more than that. First, you got to get your mind right. Before you come up in here, huh? You got to get to concentrate yourselves on Saturday because worship is a going up to Jerusalem. Am I right about it? Let us go up to the house of the God of Jacob. It's a going up. And so you got to get your mind right that I'm coming to celebrate Jesus because he, it was him who woke me up this morning. It was him who started me on my way. It's Jesus who sustains me. And so if the Lord had blessed you, you got to come in here with some praise in your heart. Mary came to celebrate the Passover. Uh, what Jesus had done. Well, what, uh, why are you celebrating Mary? Because he what he done in the past. Don't you, 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 we have forgot about what he had done in the past. You remember what he done in the past, this is just the prologue, but we want to look at the epilogue. The epilogue was that her brother was sick. Am I right about it? And remember in John chapter 11, her brother was sick. And they sent for Jesus. Jesus, the one you love, is sick. And the Bible said that Jesus waited four days to come to Bethany. But preacher, why did he wait four days? Well, the reason why he waited four days to come to Bethany, knowing that Lazarus was, was sick unto death, well, the Jews had a thing that, that uh, if a man died, his spirit lingers with him for three days. And so the spirit hangs around the body. That's what the Jews thought. So Jesus said, I'm going to fix them. And so I'm going to wait four days. Huh? I'm going to wait four days before I go to Bethany. Huh? I'm going to wait four days before I go to Bethany. And so he waits four days to go to Bethany. And then he gets to Bethany. Here's Mary shaking her head, talking about, where you been, Jesus? We sent for you four days ago. We, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had been here, Jesus, where you been? You always come by here when you want something to eat. We, we, we always want to use the spare bedroom. We, you always hanging around here when you're hungry. Where you been? Jesus said, where had, where had you laid him? Where had you laid him? You see, something had died. And my question in you, in, 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 to you this morning, something had died in you. Had your zeal died? Have your love for the Lord died? Huh? Has your love for one another died? Have your excitement for the, the cause of Christ and coming together to worship him died? Jesus said, I've come to raise you up out of that deadness. I come to raise you up. Raise up that zeal that died in you. Raise up that uh, 
uh, love that died in you. Raise that up. That's what it did when Lazarus was dead. But Jesus said, I'm coming to raise up that dead man that's been dead for four days. How long has you, that zeal been dead in you that you let die? Huh? You let die. How long had the love for the cause of Christ died? How long has, has, has your love for one another died? How long had the love for God died in you when that you don't care anymore about the cause of Christ? You just let it die. But Jesus said, I come here this morning to resurrect it. I come here this morning to put the more zeal in you to let you know that I love you beyond measure. You, we, we just let something die in us. Huh? Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm not going to sit here and let it die. I'm going to resurrect it. So this morning, you need to let Jesus resurrect that zeal that died in you. Amen. Who killed it all? Amen. Who stole it from you? Huh? You got to the point now we're saying, well, you know, it's too much. Let Brother Williams do it. We are workers together with God. Amen. Amen. It's not about saying about the preacher in the church or the evangelist in the church. No, it's about being a ministering church and evangelizing church. And, we, and you're wondering why we're not celebrating, we're not excessive about our love for the Lord. And, and, and you see, because this love and excessiveness is like cancer. It draws people. Huh? We ought to be willing, to, by, by the love we have for one another, he said, you are my disciples. And so, so he, 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 he's celebrating his past uh, performance portfolio. Huh? He has a past performance portfolio. And you, some of us, has forgot what he has done in the past. Huh? When you was out there in the cesspool of sin? Huh? Huh? When you was out there kicking up your boots, thought you was having a good time? Well, did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way when the uh, pain was rocking your body? Did he send healing down to you? Huh? When the bills piled up, did he make a way out of no way? And you can't come in here and celebrate Jesus? When you were lost in sin and sorrow, he said, I died to set you free. Oh, that's something to celebrate. I'm celebrating what he did in my past. And my past was messed up from the flow up. Am I right about it? I was without hope and without God in the world, but Jesus came along and rescued me out of the cesspool of sin. Amen. Put my feet on a higher plane. Now I have a new love in my heart. Nothing is too extravagant for the cause of Jesus because he did for me what I couldn't do for myself. Huh? Excessive celebration. And you got to watch these referees. And I say, they're trying to kill your joy and your zeal for the Lord. Remember, didn't nobody gave it, give it to you. God gave it to you. Am I right about it? Remember, it was Jesus that died for you that you might have this excitement and this extravagance for his call. Jesus did all of this for it. Huh? And then... Uh, she, she's praising him for what he's doing in her present situation. See what I'm saying? She, you would think, the Bible said that uh, this was in the house of Simon the leopard. Simon the leopard? He was a, a leopard? And you couldn't be within 50 feet of a leopard. Am I right about it? Uh, he wouldn't, hey, you're not going to get in my house because that leprosy rubs off. Yeah, Simon the leper is now sitting in the house and then there's Lazarus who was dead but now he's alive and you would think it would be those two celebrating the Lord more than Mary. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. The folk that was healed. Huh? The folks that were saved from death. 
the man that was raised from the dead, he was already dead and stinking. You would think Lazarus would be celebrating and excited. Get me that box of nard. Let me, huh? You would think that the leopard on his way to a death grave. Jesus came along and healed them of his leprosy. Now you can go around with people. You would think that he and, 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 and Lazarus would be the one celebrating. But no, they hating on Mary. They hating. They ain't loving. They done forgot what Jesus had done for them. Have you forgot what Jesus had done for you? You can't come here and say, I, I, I don't want to get involved. I just want to sit back there, take my communion, get my little 15 cents, and, and don't call me to do nothing. <laughs> I'm meddling this morning, but we, 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 we got to get real with this thing. Some of us are so standoffish. That's not the spirit of Christ. Because where the spirit of Christ is, there's unity. There's love. The community, this family. Am I right about it? Yeah. But no, here are those that was healed, healed from their sickness, hating on Mary. And then Judas, at least he let out what he thought was right. But the other disciples, you read Mark and, and Matthew, they were thinking the same thing Judas was saying out loud. Huh? Yeah. How come this wasn't sold? And give it to the poor. Huh? They were thinking it, but they didn't have the courage to say it out loud. Judas was a thief, so he didn't care. <laughs> Am I right about it? No. Huh? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the Peter, James, and the, all of them. They had missed the whole point. Mary was praising him for what he is doing right now. Are you thankful for what he's doing right now in your life? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you still got a job. Yeah. Huh? You still got a roof over your head. You still got your health and all of your little mind. Yeah, yeah. What he's doing right now. He's a right on time right now God. Yeah. He's a right now Savior. Yes, yeah, he had past performance. But perform his portfolio, but he still had works in my presence. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, it was Jesus that kept you from getting the COVID-19. And those of us who had it, he raised us up. Yeah. When the pain were rocking your body, he sent healing down to you. And then you can't come up in here and you, all you can do is keep your mouth shut. Ain't got no praise in your heart, no celebration for what the Lord has done for me and what he's brought me through. How, how, how unthankful have we become? How unthankful that we have we become when we don't come to celebrate what he's doing right now? And think about it, he knows what we're going through. Huh? And he sends his Holy Spirit down to guide us and to lead us. Because without his spirit, man, here I go off on the deep end. Huh? If it would not for the Lord on my side, I don't know where will I be. Kept my enemies away. Brought the sunshine to a cloudy day. How many cloudy days have you had and the Lord has brightened up your day? Made a way for you out of nowhere when the, you didn't know how you're going to pay the bill. Didn't have no income coming in. He's still blessing you. We should be celebrating. Every morning we wake up should be an extravagant celebration. Am I right about it? Huh? And then, because I, I, I don't want to be too long because I had, we knew we had to go someplace to, to singing. But me and Judas got to go someplace uh, we, 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 Sunday's our working day. But uh, uh, he not only blessed her in the past and blessed her in her present, but she's doing this because she's standing on his promises. Yeah. He, he, she, she, she's doing this based upon his promises. Well, well, what are your promises? I promise never to leave you. 
I promise never to forsake you. Am I right about it? Uh, I plan to go with you always. Uh, I, I, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He, she's praising him on a promise. Amen. See, the uh, uh, Bible says six days before the Passover. So that means that six days after, uh, once the Passover was over, he went to the cross. He said, I'm praising him because of the blood that was going to be said for my sin. She didn't know that. But she was praising him on the promises of God. Are you standing on the promises of God? Huh? Or are you sitting on the premises? Huh? I'm praising him on a promise. Huh? That he will never believe me. He will never forsake me. That all spiritual blessings are in Christ Jesus. That he will always guide me and lead me and direct me. Huh? Somebody said, well, that's too expensive for Jesus. So how come you didn't give it to the poor? Huh? That's just too expensive for Jesus. And what if Jesus felt that way about you? You too messed up, and I'm too good and too holy to die on the cross and carry your sins up there with me. Huh? He didn't feel that way about us, did he? Huh? No. Jesus said, greater love had no man than this. That a man will lay down his life for his friends. Huh? That's how much Jesus loved us, even though we were messed up, Whitley. Even though we, we, we were lost in the cesspool of sin, he seen something in us that we didn't see in ourselves. Huh? Oh, he knew you were tore up. He knew what shape we was in. But he said, I love them so much. The world he created, he created all this for us. The world that he brought us in is for us. And he gave us dominion over the work of his hands. And over the Father, see, God made us to dominate, but now we're letting our sin dominate us because we don't want to celebrate him. Hmm? Excessive celebration. It's too much, Kirkendall, for you to come down to back here at 5 o'clock this afternoon and study. It's too much for you to come out on Wednesday night. It's too much for you to go visit sick folks. It's too much. You know, you're too busy and you... It, no, it's not too much. That what Jesus It's not too much. I'm going to come to go down there and, and, and think about it. He said, I'm going to become one of them. I'm not going to walk around as an angel, but I'm going to become, he became one of us so that he can cry with us, feel for us, empathy for us, and have compassion for us. An uh, uh, angel can't do that. Am I right about it? Matter of fact, an angel don't even receive grace. The Bible said an angel that sinned, God cast him down. But those of us who are made a little lower than the angel, God said, I'm going to give him my grace and my mercy. Oh, we ought to be celebrating. Because he treated us like the angels that sin reserved and changed the darkness to the day of judgment. God, instead of putting us down there, he gives us grace and time and space for repentance. Oh, we ought to be celebrating and be accessible about it for what God, his mercy, his grace, and his love towards us. Because you know that we should have been dead a long time ago. Am I right about it? Bad as I am, I know I should have been dead. And then, even at my very best, Whitney, I still mess up. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> at my very best. So I come to celebrate. Nothing too excessive. Huh? Uh, no, I, I know. I, I, if I got to give my last penny for the Lord, for the cause of the Lord, I know the Lord will provide. I know the Lord will provide. I see my daddy do it. Go take his paycheck and give it to somebody else so they can have. But the Lord always provides. We always had milk in the morning for our cereal. Am I right about it? Yeah, he was a gospel preacher, but he was a broke gospel preacher. But I tell you one thing, I live good. 
didn't miss a meal, had a roof over my head, clothes on my back. And so I learned how to celebrate Jesus for what he continued to do for me. And so we ought to celebrate him and love him with all of our heart and our souls. Oh, this morning I told Daryl I'm going to quit at 12 and I'm going to keep him at that. I just wanted to say something to let you know. Start giving the Lord your best. In spite of her being criticized, she continued to take that ointment, put it on his feet, and wipe her with her hair. Am I right about it? They got mad at her, first of all, because a woman ain't supposed to take down her hair in front of men. That's under the Jews, Jewish law. But when she took that hair down, boy, they, 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 they criticized her. The flag starts being thrown and the whistle starts being blown. You know, they, if they criticize Mary, Jesus said, let her alone. She's doing this for the day of my burial. Huh? Because you're not going to always have me with you. So when they start criticizing you, realize you're doing something better. Let them criticize you all you want, but uh, they're not giving out rewards. Am I right about it? Yeah. They're not giving out rewards. All they're giving out is complaints and whistles and flags and murmuring and complaining and all of that. We're trying to hold you back, but don't let that hold you back. Continue to have that zeal and love for the Lord and continue to celebrate. And, and if, if I get too loud and start clap my hand too much, you move your seat because I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'm, it's hard to hold, hold my emotions sometimes. Sometimes I just want to shout because what the Lord has done for me. Sometimes I just want to lift my voice and pray and if you can't come here with a song in your heart, there's something radically wrong with you. You haven't given yourself completely to the Lord. Your ma, Mary, Worship him because of the, her past experience with Jesus. She worshiped him because of her present condition. Her brother was now alive. He was once dead. Huh? You was once dead. Shouldn't you be celebrating that you're not alive? Spiritually alive because you were spiritually dead and without God and any hope in the world. But now in Christ Jesus. Huh? I'm somebody. I'm somebody. So Seth, he took me as a nothing and made me a something and a child of the king. I'm celebrating the king. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? I'm celebrating the king. Y'all, you know, y'all celebrate holidays and all the other thing and get extravagant about it. Don't let it be Christian. Christmas. Get extravagant about it. Go way out of the way. Spending all kind of money because it's Christmas. <laughs> Don't get caught up in that. Get caught up in celebrating him who continued to intercede on your behalf. Because God can wipe us all out at one time. Yeah. So I'm going to praise him while I still got air in my body. I'm going to celebrate him. And not going to get weary in well-doing. And I'm not going to look at other people. I'm not going to look at other people because other people will discourage you. And it's the people that was up in the house, remember? Those that were closest to Jesus. Walked with them every day. They were the criticizers. So don't let the people in the church discourage you. You're not working for them, and they don't have no reward for you. Amen. Your reward is in heaven. Jesus said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus came and died. I told you he became one of us. And, uh, but he did no sins. He was tempted in every point like we are, but yet he didn't give in to it like we do, Whitley. Am I right about it? Huh? being betrayed by his dearest friend, Judas, knowing that he was going to die on Calvary's cross. You know what he did say? He didn't say, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. No, he said, for this purpose I came into the world, to give my life a ransom for many. 
died upon the cross. But while he was on that cross being nailed to that cross, he took your sin, my sin, everybody's sins in his flesh on the cross. Buried in the heart of the earth for three days and night. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. Oh, we ought to celebrate. Never to die anymore. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Then, believe this with all your heart. Be willing to repent of your sins. You've been following your own dictates of your heart, your own desires. Now I have a new love in my life, a new desire, a new celebration. I can get extravagant about it because I know that my labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Be willing to repent of your sin. Confess him as Lord of your life. The Lord Jesus Christ. Confess him. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then the final act is to be washed in the blood. Baptized for the remission of your sin. And then because the deaf angel is going to come by. And I heard the revelator said, blessed are the dead that die where? In the Lord. Huh? I'd rather die in the Lord. I'd rather die celebrating in the Lord. I ain't got to go out and party. I ain't got to go clubbing. Because I find a better love, a better celebration. And I can be extravagant as much as I, I spend all my money on the Lord. I ain't got to spend it on drink, and drugs, and women. And I, no! I found a new joy. And I'm going to be excessive about my service to him. If there's one here, maybe somebody had missed the mark. Come while we together stand and sing. Come to Jesus while, we, while the blood is running warm in your veins. Brother Evans. Have you been to, to Jesus for the cleansing power? Wash in the blood. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus while the blood is running warm in your vein. It's prayer time. You need prayer. Come on down. Are you walk? Come on. Come on to Jesus. He said that any man will come unto me. I will in no wise turn my way. Come on. Let's celebrate the Lord today. Let us celebrate your baptism into Christ Jesus. Get your name written in the Lamb Book of Life. Live faithful unto death. And then after a while, he said, come, come up higher. I'll make you ruler over many. But, uh, you may be seated. You may be seated. Where are you? Why are you? Why? In the blood, in the soul, so cleansing blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb are your garments. Are they white
No, church, amen. I want to thank uh, Brother Kirk for another wonderful message, coming over and putting some thoughts on our mind and our hearts. And I uh, just want to once again thank him and his wife. Uh, Brother Kirk is always one that even when it's short notice, you can call him up and my brother is ready to preach a lesson. And we appreciate that. And uh, that just kind of reminds me of those uh, that are uh, attending uh, on Wednesday nights. We're going through a series of lessons on lesson preparation and delivery. Uh, we know that uh, we need soldiers in the Lord's army. And uh, me, as just being a steward here at Palomar, what good would it be if I spent so much years here and we never ever trained or developed preachers and teachers? Uh, what good would it be for me not to uh, fulfill Ephesians chapter number 4, the verses number 12, that we are equipping the saints for the working of the ministry. So we have a number of uh, brethren here that I would love to one day see them stand up here and give a lesson. And that's every brother in the building. Amen, somebody. Uh, every brother in the building that is able, and we will do whatever we can to provide you with the, with the training, but then it's, it's going to be up to you if you want to make that step. And then also for our ladies we have a number of ladies here. We are privileged to have a number of ladies here that have been invited to speak at Ladies' Days and various functions, and they too have their own uh, uh, ministries, so to speak, where they are reaching out to people. And so once again, we want to prepare them as well so that they can go out and do the work of the Lord. Once again, we want to thank Brother Kirk for coming over. We want to thank all of you for coming in, all of our visitors that have come out on this morning. When you come to East Palomar Street Church of Christ, we are a family operation. We're a family church here, and we just want to preach what thus saith the Lord. You find that over 3,000 times in Scripture, what thus saith the Lord. That's really what we're concerned about. We're not too much carried away with people's opinions or thoughts or what they have from their own conjecture. We want to know what does God say, what does his word say. So we appreciate you coming on out. We do have some prayer requests. I saw the brothers going around collecting the cards. Please continue to remember our beloved sister Paula, as once again, she is in a different state, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really prayerful of her mental and spiritual. You see, we can get up, we can walk around, we can go to the store, we can go to the park, we can go to the movies, we get frustrated when people cut us off on the freeways. She doesn't get to enjoy any of that. She is literally there in her place, and so she is with her own thoughts. We need to pray for her. We need to pray for her. We understand COVID, the Delta variant. It's not conducive for all of us to go visit her uh, in her place, but uh, our sister needs our prayers. And if you can, uh, please see Sister Whitley or myself. We'll give you her phone number, sometimes just a quick phone call, just a little phone call to just say, Sister, we love you. We're praying for you. Sometimes that goes a long way because in her condition, it changes her mind. It changes the way she's thinking. It takes her mind off of her condition, like Brother, Brother Kirk uh, spoke on today, and would we'll talk about God, how God was good to her in the past, how God was good to her uh, right now, and how she can stand on his promises. But I'm not here to preach another lesson. Brother Kirk did an outstanding job. So I'm going to ask my brother Duncan to come up with the prayer cards, and then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, conclude the service. Okay, we have a few prayer requests. Our sister Julie Evans is asking prayers for a friend and also pray for Gerald. He's not feeling well and pray for herself, health and patience. Also uh, for her family, her mother and her dad for health. And also uh, brother Gerald is here. He's He's been in the back all morning. He's not feeling well. He said he kind of ate something bad this morning, so we'll pray for him to uh, get well. Debbie Stenson, asking prayers for her family. Pray for my daughter and grandchildren, as well as uh, her student, Alex, that has anxieties due to COVID. Our sister Ressie is asking prayers for family, 
mother, friends, and herself, please pray for my son, Anthony, and my grandson for their health. And also, Sister Duncan is asking prayers for her family, her mother. Uh, the mother uh, her mother is home now after uh, her surgery. She's uh, doing a lot better. Uh, she is able to walk around a little bit and build up her strength. So we thank you for, uh, for your prayers. And also for my niece that's in Texas, she is doing a lot better. She's off the ventilator. Um, she caught COVID. And of course, pneumonia sets in. And so she's doing a lot better uh, as she's recovering. Her name is uh, Desney. So uh, again, thank you for all your prayers. And we'll have our brother Tony lead us in a burst of a song. And I can't remember who has the closing prayer. Uh, Brother uh, Whitley, Jr. The third. Let us know this page 875. 875. Home of the soul. If for the prize we have striven after our labors are o'er, for as to our souls will be given on the eternal shore, home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest. Never to wrong, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, he is a light off in the storm. Lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time, dear Lord, thanking you for your grace and mercy and just the gift of life, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come out this morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. Dear Lord, we come asking prayers for the sick and the poor, wherever they may be, especially those in the household of faith. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who requested prayer this morning. I can't recall them, but you know who they are, dear Lord. Pray that you bless them as you see fit. Pray for all of us here present, dear Lord, that you continue to guide and direct our hearts, dear Lord. Pray that you Give calmness and peace to Sister Paula at this time, dear Lord. We pray with the doctors who are with her, dear Lord. Pray that she'd be at peace and just comfort and just know that she's well-loved and being prayed for, dear Lord. We pray that as we go on to our houses, dear Lord, we pray that you grant us safe travels and bring us back here safely at the next appointed time. And just that you continue to bless us all, that we may continue to grow and evolve as better Christians. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 